Zach's high school girlfriend, Beth, is killed while jogging. Unable to get over her death, he continues to visit her parents. But when he discovers Beth has come back from the dead, their relationship is awkwardly rekindled in Life After Beth. Hi, I'm Sean. I'm here with Kevin and Salim, and we're going to talk about Life After Beth, the new zombie movie with Dane DeHaan and Aubrey Plaza. We've all just seen it. Kevin, did it rise to the occasion for you? The trailer I thought was really funny, and I got excited to see this because I like Aubrey Plaza on Parks and Rec. Um, I really did not like this movie at all. Mm -hmm. Just, it wasn't funny. There's so many good actors in this, but they're given nothing to do. And I think my main problem right from the start is that she is dead from the beginning. Like, they start with the funeral. So I have no idea what Dane DeHaan's relationship with her was. Mm -hmm. So when she comes back, I don't know how they're supposed to interact. Like, I don't know how they used to be. So I don't care. I know. I completely agree. It's uh, There's too many questions for a zombie romantic comedy that just n don't need to be there. Why Why do they come back? Why are they acting the way that they're acting? Then you're, you're right. I don't know their relationship. It, it just it actually becomes a little bit annoying trying to figure out what yeah. their relationship is. And then, I don't know, it just kind of devolves. It, I feel like there could have been a really interesting story there if they established the rules a little yeah. bit better. If they actually had rules, it just felt like they're like, okay, it's a zombie movie. People at this point don't really care how zombies are made because right. of The Walking Dead, so we'll just, just throw it all at you. Right. Just, just, just throw it at him. Well, with so many zombie movies, it's almost as if they're trying to say, we're going to break the rules here, we're going to do something a little bit different. But if you're going to break the rules, you can't have a lot of loose ends and not establish your own rules. Exactly. It's like, why do they want to go in the attic? Why do they like smooth jazz? Right. And and you're absolutely right. It's supposed to be a relationship movie, yeah. but we can't root for the relationship because she's nuts, because she's a zombie. Yeah, exactly. Right. So there's no reason for us to really be invested in, in them getting together or not getting together. I mean, it just falls apart from the premise. Yeah, they tried... And, and I and I appreciate this. They wanted to ground it. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, Maury. Look who I found. It's oh Beth. All right, calm it's down, Beth. Zach. What are you doing? Hey, I have that scar. What's he supposed to do? He ran around me. He made a juke and he ran what around. What is going on here? What is going on here? So let's talk about Dane DeHaan a little bit. I actually, I'm a big fan of Dane DeHaan. He's one of my favorite emerging actors. First saw him in Chronicle. And I think that any movie that he's in, he's usually one of the best parts of it. Because he, he takes, you know, every role very seriously. Unfortunately, I think he took this one a little bit too seriously. Too seriously. Well, maybe he didn't take it too seriously and everybody else didn't take it seriously enough. But they just, he just felt like he was in two completely, him and everybody else felt like they were in two completely different movies. He's getting typecast, I think, Dane DeHaan. He's like yeah. this brooding teenager or whatever. And I just, it's like, why is he the only one in this town who's at least recognizing elements right. of what's going on? I mean, it's like the parents, obviously, their daughter came back from the dead, but they're like, oh, okay, whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we just don't fine. want anybody to see her. Right. right. But it's like Aubrey Plaza is a charming actress, but she's just like screaming and chewing on upholstery in this movie. I mean, she's got, she's doing nothing but that. I actually enjoyed her because she always plays the same exact character, the, you know, kind of deadpan character from Parks and Recreation. I thought that... And now she's her deadpan. But I thought seeing her transformation, even though I don't know who she was at the very beginning of the movie, seeing her slowly turn into a zombie, I thought, you know, with the makeup and everything, I thought that was pretty interesting to watch. I don't feel so good. I feel really dizzy. Really? Are you hungry? No, not really. I just feel really cold. Your, win your windows, your windows broken. It won't go up. You should really get this fixed, Zach. Someone could like totally get in your car and steal your radio or something. I think we need to blame Jeff Bana, who wrote and directed this film. He also wrote I Heart Huckabees, one of my least favorite films of the last ten years. So I should have been forewarned before walking into this one that it wasn't going to be what I thought it was going to be. I'm the complete opposite. <laughs> I loved I Heart Huckabees. So when I when I saw that his name was attached, I was like, okay, it's going to be interesting. It, it, it has nothing, there's no connection between the two <laughs> movies. Uh, I mean, I felt and like... he's done oh, nothing in between. He hasn't. This, yeah, Heart Huck, like 10 years ago. It was actually yeah. 10 years ago that he did I Heart, I Heart Huckabees. Very I mean, strange. good for him for getting a movie made, and you know, and he's he got some really good people yeah. involved. I don't know if he just called the concept or they read the script. It's just, it's troubling in terms of trying to balance the tone. I mean, it's like, I, I couldn't figure out if it was supposed to be a comedy. I mean, I assumed it was, given the cast, but the jokes just aren't landing. I don't even really know what the jokes are. I mean, there's a couple of them that are pseudo funny where they're watching TV and there's like a, a, a report on, and it's like, oh, that guy's been dead for 30 years. Hey, he looks great or whatever. You know, I mean, so that's like kind of funny, but it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. And like yeah. you were saying, some of these characters, they're just, they're just not connecting with each other. They just feel like they're all 
all in their own separate short films and not in a <laughs> single entity. Yeah, it was like, I don't know if it's trying to be slapstick, I'm not sure if it's trying to be grounded comedy, it's just kind of all over the place. And it's it's just, it's unfortunate because I feel like there there was an attempt there to try to make something cohesive, but I think they were trying to do too, way too many different things at once because they're trying to be unique and different. You know, you know what movie did this better? 1993. My boyfriend's back. And that wasn't very good either, <laughs> but it was better than this. <laughs> Who yeah. knew that anything would ever get compared to my boyfriend's back? Right? <laughs> Unoriginal, uninspired, and unfunny, Life After Beth is dead on arrival with no hope of resurrection. Skip it. Life After Beth is not necessarily dead on arrival, but its faint pulse does warrant a second life on video. Stream it. Life After Beth should have consumed a few more brains on its way to the big screen. Skip it. Well, our vote adds up to half a ticket, which is a skip it for Life After Bath. Cheers. Cheers. Made my skin crawl. <laughs> I've seen one or two movies in my life that were worse. Stream it. <laughs>